two, three, two, give you a few head nods. Okay, well, if you're not familiar with the butterfly effect, let me tell you what it is. It's a scientific theory that discusses how a very small change at one place in a system can create a big effect on the rest of the system. So, for example, a flock of birds flying in China may have a direct result on the weather pattern in the United States. That's a for instance in this theory. So you may be thinking, how can that be, right? Well, the theory applies to other things too, so let's use another example. How about going on top of a mountain that is surrounded by multiple valleys and placing a bowling ball on the top and letting it just fall? Well, it's only going to go through one of the valleys. And we could do a lot of what ifs. What if that bowling ball rolls right through an intersection and causes an accident? and just keeps on going and then lands in the body of water that it uses, forever changing its ecosystem. But what if that water was the supply for all the other valleys? And what if that intersection where the accident happened was the main traffic source for the other valleys to get to one another? You can see how something so small has a bowling ball rolling down into a valley can have such a big effect. Well, for me, I think the butterfly effect is true in our faith. We celebrate All Saints Day for a reason. We celebrate the witness of the people in our lives and the lives of our community who have affected us most. I like to call it a little something different. I like to call it the ripple effect. Because as we were looking at some of the images, you remember baptism, right? We're all on this baptismal journey together. And I see these saints who've gone on before us, and some who live among us as stones that we encounter on our journey. And when we encounter them in that baptismal water, it can cause a ripple. And some people, the rock's big enough, it creates a wave in our life. So, as we think about that, anyone here think of somebody on your journey who's created a ripple or a wave? Yes, oh, yeah. maybe. Yeah? Anyone want to name one? My sister Joyce. Your sister Joyce. <clears throat> Your mother. Your aunt. Well, it's not just those we encounter in our living, but our scriptures are a reminder, too, of God, <coughs> how God is God of our ancestors, a God of the saints. In Deuteronomy, we're reminded of the blessing of having multiple generations in a family, but at the same time being reminded of the responsibility to pass down our memories and our experiences of God in the world. Remember what Deuteronomy said? It says, tell your children and your children's children what you saw, so that on the journey, if they are ever to stray, they can turn back to the God of their ancestors. So just imagine with me for a minute the ripple effect that Deuteronomy captures for us today and all those saints who had been affected by the God of their ancestors. The wisdom, the experiences of God, encounters with other saints that has shaped our ancestors has most certainly, I think, shaped us. I don't know about some of your names, but for me, the wisdom that was shared by my great-grandparents is something that I will definitely pass down to my children. One story in particular comes to mind, and that's the story of my grandfather and my great-grandmother, the one I showed the pictures to of the kids. See, she was a single mom in the 30s, 1930s. Her husband left her just a few months after my grandfather was born, and she's the first woman in Mercer County to be given a divorce that filed for it. There's all sorts of neat things about her. I could go on and on. But the wisdom lesson that I would like to take from her life and that of my grandfather's is one that I think all of us could learn from. They learned patience. My grandmother would say she learned wisdom from this moment. Being a single mom, she had to teach my grandfather how to cook. And this one particular day after she taught him how to make fried apple pies, my grandfather thought he would impress his mom and make some fried apple pies 
as an afternoon snack after school as well as for their dessert at dinner. But my grandmother forgot something when she was teaching him. She forgot to tell him if you run out of stuff, you gotta just stop. So here he was with apple and dough, and he ran out of apple at a certain point, so he made more. And then what happens? He ran out of dough, so he made more dough. And he just kept going and going and going until their two-story house was completely full. Every window still had hot apple pies cooling. And when she came in the door from work, expecting to make dinner and check on him and his homework, here he is making all these pies. It wasn't like they had a lot of income being a one-income household in the 30s. So you can imagine she was probably also really frustrated that he had used a lot of their fruits and their flour and other things like their butter on fried apple pies. But right, she learned patience. She learned the importance of making sure you get clear directions. My grandfather learned the importance of knowing there's a stopping point at places in life. There's all sorts of great lessons in that story. But one that my family loved hearing growing up about my grandfather and how he really messed up. But it's not just in experiences like that or in Deuteronomy that we're reminded of the ripple effect. We're also reminded in the book of Ruth. Ruth chooses to stay with Naomi, her mother-in-law, a woman who I believe was a stone in Ruth's life. Her will was so strong that Ruth made the claim, where you go, I will go, where you live, I will live. Your people will be my people, and your God, my God. I'll just imagine for a minute how the story of Ruth would be so very different if she decided to be like Orba and go back home. Have any of you ever had a Naomi in your life? Well, when I read this story, I always think of my dad's parents. And that's because my grandparents only dated for about three weeks. And in that three weeks, they missed a lot of important conversations you should probably have before you get married. <laughs> you know, one of those things that they missed was the fact that my grandfather felt this call into to ministry. See, they grew up in the same town, and my grandfather's dad, my great grandfather, was the school teacher. And uh, I think my grandmother thought he was going to come home and be the, the teacher. But instead, after the service, he wanted to go to school and become a preacher. So in that, like I said, three-week period, they get married, she goes to his base, and when they finish up, he comes back to go to college and takes his first appointment. And it was out in the middle of nowhere in Upshur County. They have one car, which he, my grandfather, had to take to go to school at Westland every day, leaving my grandmother alone with no running water and a baby. They had another one while they lived there. And they didn't have any income other than chickens and produce. So they depended upon how people did in that community. Now, if you ever catch her, she'll tell you, in her opinion, him forgetting to mention that was grounds for divorce. <laughs> but she did not want to be a preacher's wife. No way, no how. She's fine being the teacher's wife, but she was not going to be the preacher's wife. Yet she made a decision to stay with my grandfather. And she stayed by his side everywhere they went, making the communities that they served, her home, the people that they lived among, her family. A lot like Ruth did in, this, in Scripture. It really reminds me a lot of that. And I've often wondered, what would have happened if she had said, no, I won't follow you around? A couple things would have happened. I wouldn't be here. But the other piece of that is, I've encountered a lot of people, not only in Christian ministry, but also in my own personal life, who knew my grandparents, who have been touched by their work or by their service. So to hear their stories, to experience their witness, has been powerful in my own life. And I would have missed all that if my grandmother had decided she was going to go back to her people. But she's still pretty insistent, even though she stayed, right? That was the wrong thing to do. <laughs> However, on All Saints Day, we must look one other place besides the people and our scriptures. It's into our tradition. 
and how we celebrate faith on this journey. And one of those ways is through Holy Communion, something we're about to do together. It's a sacrament that we celebrate on the regular on a regular basis in every Christian church. In our celebration, we're urged to remember, to remember Jesus, and to partake of bread and juice, and remember in that partaking of his sacrifice. We can't forget the ripple effect that Jesus had on each of us and on this world. And we can't forget, most importantly, to tell our children Amen. and our children's children and our community and the world about the life and the love of Jesus. We must be the people willing to be the saints in the world to come, bearing witness to that love. So who knows what person or persons will be on life's journey that will be changed because of the ripple that we will share with them by sharing God's love. There are many people, I'm sure, who've been stones in your all's journeys and in mine. And in the journey of this church, some that we're able to recognize and offer thanks to, others we don't recognize until it's too late to offer our verbal thanks. And there are others who may be complete strangers that we'll never have the opportunity to go and give thanks to. But they're all people who've shaped us, who've made us who we are, and at some level will shape the witness that we give of Jesus' love to others. So as we celebrate All Saints Day today, I encourage you to remember and to celebrate the saints that have come before us, those who are living amongst us, and those who are still yet to be. Honor the ways they've shaped your journey. Celebrate the many ways your lives have been changed because of knowing them. And remember in such a way that you can tell your children and your children's children. And be prepared for the times in which God will call upon you to be a rock in someone's journey to create a ripple or a wave. And I pray that in those moments that you are so bold that you can share your witness of Jesus and his love. I pray that it may be so for you and for me. Amen.